taken over the chain link fence. It, it's I think it used to be called Beddington Farm. And it's a huge area of, of not wasteland, but uh, unused land. And, and there is a lot of aggregate and that's been, been extracted over the years and it's formed these, these lovely lakes as a start of a hill which really is a rubbish tip but it's all being landscaped and it's going to be part of a much larger uh, park area including Mitcham Common, Mitcham Golf Course but at the moment this isn't open to the public it's still being worked in but living in suburbia we have to look out for these little gems to paint now there's, there's not a lot going for it other than the water and the, and, and, and the simple sky i'm going to embellish the background of these trees I'll, I'll put some blue in first and superimpose to stretch it back a bit so we'll take a bit of artistic license on that i hope and we've got this all this grass and, and nettles blackberries all sorts of oh and and hundreds of uh, canada geese with their their little goslings if that's what they're called so it was a lovely, lovely ride to Merton Abbey and then we came back along parts of the, the River Wandle which I paint. So I'll uh, move the camera away and angle it back up to my bit of paper and then we'll have, we'll have a go at this. I, I have painted it before but I want to do it slightly different. Uh, I've moved on a bit I think with the watercolours. Not having done them for about 15 years and I've, I'm really enjoying doing them at the moment. I'll move this out of the way. So what we've got, Fabriano, 130 pounds watercolour paper, a uh, cup of tea, or mug of tea. Can't go, husk bricks, can't go for the far long without a cup of tea. Uh, so the two inch, or slightly less than two inch hake, I've got several of, several of these that I, that I use. Um, Various riggers. I don't use them all. I just some of them I use for the ink or the the acrylic ink paint paint drawings. So they're just a collection there. A uh, couple of rounds which I very rarely use. Mainly the hake and and a couple of flats, acrylic flats. Uh, the paint is is Windsor and Newton Cotsman student quality. Comes in these big tubes, 21 mil tubes, and it's economic. It's a good way to buy it. My ah, my palette has been kept in this Ziploc bag, which has got some paint in it. Look, it's leaked uh, with uh, ye lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt amber, paint grey, and my favourite colour is burnt sienna. It gives a lovely dark, deep red. I'll, just, I'll have to clean that out later. Oh, that's because you always wasting paint. I don't like wasting paint. But anyway, I'll, uh, I'll give that a clean up later. Right, okay, so we'll start by wetting the paper all over. It's a very dry day today. It's beautiful, the summer seems to have arrived after some false, false starts. This is on the back of a failure at the Jesse of Seven Islands. I was going to do it again, but I thought I'll, I'll go with this one. But because it's, a, it's over a chain link fence, I had to hold, hold my camera, my, my camcorder, in the air, that's why it's a bit crooked. Right, okay, so we'll warm everything up with a bit of, bit of raw sienna. Raw sienna is not a really saturated colour like yellow ochre, it, but I prefer it. It's, it's, it's lovely and transparent. And I, I, don't, I don't use it in, in uh, acrylic painting at all. I use yellow ochre. Right, so we'll put in a bit of, bit of blue. A bit of a streaky sky because it's going to be just a little bit of sky. So we just, whoops, let's get some, get some blue going. And the water just reflect the sky, and we'll mix a bit of light red with that to make a bit of a light cloud colour.
Right, so that is more or less a sky that I saw yesterday. The, 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 the uh, raw sienna becomes the white of the clouds. Now, clouds are never white. If you hold a piece of pure white paper, like a bit of watercolour paper, up against a white cloud, you'll see that the cloud is full of colour. Creamy, ready, beautiful. But you, unless you do that, you don't really know. You think it's like when you first start oil painting or acrylic painting, you make your clouds with, with white paint and you think, wonder why it all goes wrong. It's just a little bit wrinkled where it's expanding, but because I painted on it yesterday, it's uh, well, it doesn't matter. Now, we'll put in some, some, some background, so I'll use a bit of light red. Oh, a bit of a lizard, I think. This is just a backdrop, so we'll come up here with. Oh, I can make the I can make the horizon as low as I like, can't I? My paint, my painting. So let's just go all the way across. I go up the hill. Right, we will uh... oh, we'll come horizontal here. I don't want to go up here or there. We ride along here the bikes and it's a great blackberry area as well. Right, we'll get a nice green. I'm going to use Payne's Grey with my greens. The Payne's Grey, a bit of yellow. Get on the yellow side. A bit of sienna in there. Just will you rather than have flat colours, mix other colours in with them. If you want it green, we'll make it on the green side, but vary, vary it all the time. And well, a bit of, a bit of burnt sienna in there as well, brighten it up. Right, so we've got a lot of colour in that, and we'll put in a darker green for the hill that's coming. Well, it's not going to show us yet. Okay. So we'll now come round here and, and get in this foreground. Right, let's get in the basic colours here. So a bit of sienna, a bit of burnt sienna. And then we'll go over this with other colours. So as it dries, we're getting some texture in. Right. Right, now we'll put in some banks, some shadow. And I'll come across here, put that shadow in there, or the, yeah, it will be shadow. 
So when you're confronted with huge areas that looks like the same colour, you have to find ways of showing it without being, being monotonous. So we've got lots of little beds coming across here. Let's just get my vision back here, that's my view. Right. I want that to be dry before I sort of go over it. That should be brighter than that, but I want to separate it from the background. Right, uh, so let's go in with the oops, with the greens at the back. So, paint's grey, lemon yellow, and a bit of that nice green, nice yellow. I mean, so let's just need to be a bit, a bit a little more liquid than that. What I'm trying to do is by putting that blue in the back, the back, it stretches the landscape into the distance, creates that illusion of of depth. Uh, let's just put some darker trees in here. Okay, now that's a nice thicker green. Oops, I've gone over the margin there. Leaving plenty of air in these, like sky holes, bird holes, apart from the uh, in the basement there, we'll just separate that background from the, the hill. Negative space, and we can. Can't actually see these in the photograph, but they do exist. I came down a bit farther, so I, what I'll do, I'll just put a bit of grass here. Just a bit of texture. Alright, that'll do. Swig of tea, I think. Uh, oh, I really just want to go put the shadows in underneath the foliage. This is the sort of boundary of the Bed Beddington Park. On the other side of these, these these trees, a lot of horse chestnuts, and they've been diseased. They've, sadly, a lot of horse chestnuts have, have been attacked. We've had all sorts of problems with trees, ash die back, and I think in the 70s or 80s we had the Dutch elm disease, which felled millions of our beautiful elm trees. Right, I'll just clean my brush. So there we have a background, and now we've got to work on this foreground now. Now by putting some birds in the sky, it brings the sky into the rest of the landscape. It's just a bit of, bit of detail, it's only a small thing, but it, it's very important. So 
mustn't forget to put our birds in. Right, that's a bit damp now. Now we're going to go work around this and put in some, some detail with those lovely greens. So uh, you can use burnt umber instead of the burnt sienna for your greens if you wish. It's entirely up to you. This is just my palette. It's the Ron Ransom palette plus burnt sienna because I love it. That's my, my colour. So let's just put in some, some grasses. It's quite dark there, a dark green. And this will give the shape of that, that bank. So you can do very, very fine work with this brush. Some of this we'll do with a rigger. And then we'll come down around here. Now, once some that dark to show up, so I'm going to make that. I mean, that bank to show up there. It doesn't really. I shouldn't have done that. That one there has gone a bit wrong. But never mind. We'll just we'll just add some stuff on it, and then there. Yeah. Right. Uh, looking at this, let's, let's get some warm in there now. Just creating the impression of, of grasses and things sticking up, just showing the bank. As I say, we're not going to put in the uh, the chain link fence. All right, so now we can just start going a bit mad in it, just a little bit here and there. It's just my way of doing it. And a few strokes with a rigger at the end. Right, let's just go to work with the rigger now. I need some more dark in there. Now, is it, really, the painting itself is, is bags of, as Seb Wesson would say, bags of damn all. But uh, it's great, great fun to do. I'm really enjoying doing this, provided it goes well. I just have a small rigger here and a bit of water on it. Smaller the rigger, well, this is not really a rigger, it's just a small brush. Number one. Just trying to drag up with the back of the brush here. Right, then holding the rig at the end, just just show some grasses, just sticking up in the, in the air. In some just a tangle of, of grass really with, with the shadows showing the, the lie of the land.
bit of time here. Uh, we'll uh, we can put it well, I can put a bush in there, which I will because the bushes and blackberries all down here, so I might just as well, won't I? I'll do it low just to fill this corner. Cup of tea. Right, greens. Paint's grey, lemon yellow, and then we'll. Oh, that's too much water. This is it with the hake. You, you have to control the amount of water in the brush. On the tip wet. Okay, now let's get back in there with the rigger. So some branches. I'll use a large, I'll use my large rigger if I can find the rest of the thing. Uh, ha, 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 ha. That's not it. Oh, I can see it. But it's got paint on it. I think I threw it in a rage yesterday when the other one, the painting bit, went wrong. My, my dry brush. Oh, it was a disaster. I scrapped the video, I wasn't going to show it. Right, so with a bit of, bit of paint grey and a bit of that that burnt sienna, I'll call it. Oh, there's water's not really, it's almost running down there. But I'm, I'm, I'm working with a with a warm light, uh, warm, warm darks now. Right, that's about all I'm going to do with that. I could, I, I'm in the process of doing the same as I did yesterday, ruining it. You don't want to do that. My right, birds. A lot of crows around here. Loads of seagulls here as well on the landfill. Okay, let's uh, give out a bit of a signature. Okay, we'll put that in the blue mount and have a look at it, see what we've done. So it's just a nondescript piece of land and trying to make a painting out of it. But it has the elements of sky and water. Not a lot of reflections in the water. I don't want to ruin it. <coughs> so there, there we are. Just just an exercise in painting, painting waste ground, wasteland. Really, I quite like that. I'm quite went a bit wrong there. That's a little bit heavy, but but hey, it's a demonstration. So there we are. I'm quite pleased with that. It's fairly accurate. I'll show you the uh, what I did. Let's uh, come in. You won't see it very well. There's so much light shining on it. But that's 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 the view. But I went further down with it. I've, I've lowered my horizon. So let's come back to to here. We'll zoom in. Oops. Now we'll have a look at the background. That was the main purpose. 
That's showing the trees behind the trees, um, an impression of. Very little detail. All that detail was the dry brush with the with the hake. A little bit of a flick with the finger now. So there we are, all the different colours I put in the foreground. I didn't labour the foreground. That is just a little bit too even along there. But I'm not going to change it. And then let's come down to that bushy, scrubby area. Bramble and all sorts of stuff, nettles. No portraits, don't do portraits of things. I just make suggestions. I hope you, I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Oh, for those that, that miss, are missing Freddie, we, we've had, it's been a very, very sad week for us because we lost the lovely, beautiful Ginger Tom, as you know, and if you've seen the video that I put on with him and Elsa. But at the end of September, after the holiday season, we're going to get, go for another kitten. We got used to him, and since we spend a lot of time in our retirement at home now, he was lovely company, and we, we love cats. So, so I'll be showing him off when we get him eventually. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.